In the last video, we looked at the disjunction rule applied to the special case where the events in question are mutually exclusive. Now let's look at the general rule, which also applies to cases where the events are not mutually exclusive. Here's our Venn diagram depiction of mutually exclusive events. The blue square is the whole sample space, the areas of A and B represent the two events in question, and the size of these areas is proportional to the probability of each event. In this example of drawing either a king or a jack from a deck of cards, these are mutually exclusive events, so we represent these as having no overlap in the sample space. And the probability of drawing either a king or a jack is just the algebraic sum of their individual probabilities. Now let's consider a different case. What is the probability of drawing a card that is either a king or a spade? Let's start with the first part. What is the probability of drawing a king? Well, there are four kings in a deck of cards, one for each suit, so that's just four out of 52. Now, what's the probability of drawing a spade? Well, there are four suits, so one in every four cards is a spade, so the probability is one in four. But we'll write this as 13 out of 52 to make it easier to add them in a second. Now, if we were to just add up these probabilities to get the probability of drawing a king or a spade, the answer would be this. Four plus 13 is 17, so the answer is 17 out of 52. But there's a problem with this answer. The problem is that in calculating the probabilities of drawing a king and a spade, we've double counted one card, namely the king of spades. The king of spades is both a king and a spade. So this card is included in the calculation of both probabilities. He's included in the probability of drawing a king, and he's included in the probability of drawing a spade. But there's only one king of spades in the deck. So, by counting him twice, we're overestimating the probability of drawing either a king or a spade. And that's an error. Graphically, our situation looks like this. In this case, our events are not mutually exclusive. There are cases where they overlap. And in this particular case, the overlap represents the event of drawing the king of spades. By the way, I know that these areas shouldn't be the same size, but for this introduction here, it'll be helpful to keep them the same size. Now in a Venn diagram, you define the overlap region as K and S, the cards that are both kings and spades. And you can see how, if we're just adding up the areas of K and S, then we'd be counting the overlap region twice. What we want, actually, is the area of the white space, that peanut-shaped area defined by the external boundaries of K and S. To get that area, all you need to do is subtract the area of the overlap region from the sum of the two separate areas. This picture helps you to visualize what's going on. The probability of drawing a king or a spade is represented by that peanut-shaped area on the left, and you get it by subtracting the overlap region from the sum of the two areas. And this gives us the algebraic expression that we need to fix the error caused by double counting the overlap region. You just add up the probabilities of the two events taken separately, and then subtract the probability associated with the conjunction of the two events. In this case, there's only one card that is both a king and a spade, so the probability of drawing that card is just 1 in 52. So we subtract 1 in 52 from the sum, and we get the correct answer, which is 16 out of 52, rather than 17 out of 52. And here's the general rule in terms of arbitrary events A and B. Now notice that this general rule includes the restricted rule as a special case. Since if A and B are mutually exclusive, then A and B don't overlap, and the conjunction term on the right goes to 0, and we recover the restricted rule. Let's look at another example. What is the probability of drawing either a face card or a spade? A face card, remember, is a jack, queen, or king, any card with a face on it. Here's our rule. It's equal to the probability of drawing a face card plus the probability of drawing a spade minus the probability of drawing a card that is both a face card and a spade. With examples like these, you can just count the cards to get the probabilities. Let's start with the probability of drawing a face card. There are three cards per suit and four suits, so that gives us 12 out of 52 cards that are face cards. The probability of drawing a spade is easy. There are 13 cards in a suit, so this is 13 out of 52. Now, how many cards are there that are both face cards and spades? Well, just the jack, queen, and king of spades. So that's 3 out of 52. And the rest is simple algebra. 12 plus 13 is 25. Subtract 3 is 22. And the answer is 22 out of 52. So this is how you use the general rule for calculating probabilities of disjunctions. You just have to remember to check whether the events are mutually exclusive, and if not, you need to subtract the probability of the conjunction of the two events, the cases where both events occur, 
or where both of the corresponding propositions are true.